Hi, I'm Anusha Mani with Rolling Stone India. Um, I have very, very vivid memories of um, my family home and growing up around music. It was mainly Carnatic classical, uh, it was a lot of Nati Sangeet, it was a lot of uh, old Hindi film songs, it was a lot of uh, variety of music. English was not so much a part of my growing up years, uh, but other than that, I definitely listened to a lot of variety of music. A lot of A.R. Rahman when I was growing up, a lot of uh, um, R.D. Burman, S.D. Burman, uh, Salil Chaudhary, uh, Marathi music, a uh, lot of Tamil music, Carnatic music, yeah. A whole lot of variety. I, I mean, if you ask me if I remember, I remember every smallest detail of it. Uh, because it was one of the most special memories uh, that I've ever, ever kind of accumulated in my life. Um, I had done an album with Amit Trivedi um, when I was, I think, um, 19 or 20, I want to say. And the album never released. And it's, I took it, we took it to so many labels, nobody wanted to release it. And eventually that album kind of became my demo uh, to play for other music composers. And I happened to play it to Shankarji and uh, I told him that, hey, you know what, like I have this album that I'm working on and I would love for you to listen to it. And he, he messaged me the same evening saying that he really loved the album and that he's going to work with me soon. And I remember the next day I was watching a movie and I got a call from him saying, can you come tomorrow and dub the song? And um, it just one thing led to another from there. The next morning at 9 a.m. I was in the studio uh, singing Dhoka. Um, they're exactly the opposite of what uh, you think of them as in that because they're so successful, you know, you think they're going to be difficult or they're going to be, um, you know, strict or they're nothing like that. They're the most amazing, amazing people. Um, so kind, so um, generous with their musical knowledge, so forgiving, so adjusting and uh, the amount of knowledge they have um, and the amount we get to learn from them just being in their company is just extraordinary. So amazing people to work with. I have toured with them for six years. I have um, done live shows, I've done recordings, I've done uh, lead vocals, I've done backing vocals, I've done all kinds of things with them and it's it's just been, um, it, it's, it's just the most beautiful experience ever. Oh, it's completely changed. <laughs> it's completely changed. Um, when I started out, um, it used to really be about the music composer and the singer. And now it's become more about the labels and um, external factors. A lot more are involved. And I didn't experience that when I started out. I. At best, the lyricist would be there, and uh, sometimes the director of the film would be there. But other than that, there was there was nothing else, um, or no other factors that influenced the recording of the song. And now it's um, it's it's all about the remakes or whatever. And it's I don't hear that many original compositions. When I started out, there were just so much original content coming out. Like it's it's completely changed. I mean, a voice is a voice, and if it speaks to um, the audience, then it it speaks. Um, I feel like there was an era uh, back in the day, way back in the day, when um, I've heard singers talk about how they used to change their voice according to the actress. But now we don't even know who we're singing for. We don't know where the song is going to go, when it's going to go, who it's for. So I feel like there's so many things that, um, so many variables that artists are not aware of. So I feel like. I don't know if there's such a thing as being a playback voice. I just feel like if they, if you have a voice and if people resonate with that voice, it's it's a great feeling. And of course, to hear your voice in the big screen uh, in a theater is fantastic. Like it's it's a very gratifying feeling. So maybe yeah, the, in that sense, yeah, it's a great feeling to be a playback voice. I guess. <laughs> um, so I have released singles uh, almost every year and. I started something called Les Kamanis with my husband Sangeet uh, during the lockdown which was purely to kind of kill time and to do something and you know to kind of uh, keep busy but uh, currently I have a single that's uh, ready to go uh, soon and uh, other than that I'm working on an album and uh, it's, um, it's a six song album and it's a Kamanis album and uh, I, I don't want to say more than that, but it's, it's it's a six song album that I'm working on and it's close to completion. Uh, yeah, yes and no. I feel like uh, we live in a time where 
whatever is validated is what you see on social media so if you're not um posting on social media or you're not seen enough on social media it's almost like you don't have a life of sorts mm. and to me because i still come from a generation where social media was new when i started off it was um, i feel like it is pressure in some sense because it's it's not the natural way of living because you have a life outside of social media and sometimes you have to remind yourself that oh man i haven't posted in 3 days oh my god i haven't put a story in so many hours so sometimes it you feel like you lose out or you miss out on time or something like that but um, it's important for us to kind of remember that there's a life outside of the gram and other platforms Of course because everything is trending right it's all about the 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 T word it's like if it's trending you're doing it if it's not trending then nobody cares and uh, because at the end of the day everyone's putting in effort to create the content whether it's music or otherwise and uh, if you're putting the same amount of effort and if it's not catching eyeballs then it's it's kind of futile or worthless or whatever so it's it's it, there is pressure to kind of you want to satisfy the artist inside you but you also want to keep reminding yourself that at the end of the day it has to work for it to be noticed or otherwise so there is definitely that struggle constant struggle to find that balance between art and trending trending art <laughs> um so dil mein jaake was actually a part of the album that never released with amit and uh, i had written all the songs in that and uh, i've written before that as well i wrote abhijit savan's album junoon uh, which was also composed by amit trivedi i wrote four songs in that so writing just became like a like a part of my life because i was working on this album with amit and he would encourage me to write the songs as a scratch which eventually became final because it kind of started like working out and um, i mean i think it's it's far from the truth to say that me writing led to him i mean it's just he's an incredible composer he deserves all all the success and accolades that he's been receiving for so many years and i'm just so blessed to have started my career with somebody like amit trivedi i got to learn so much from him and um, i feel like in this industry to have the right kind of guidance is so important and i feel very blessed that i got that at the right time uh Don't buy into the bullshit. If I can use that word, am I allowed to use that word? Uh, don't, don't buy into everything you hear and you listen to. Just uh, uh, have enough um, strength and courage to form your own opinions. And if you truly like feel like there's there's sense in it, um, just you have to stand by it. And trends, I understand trends are important. Uh, but just follow your own voice, follow your own soul, soul, and just listen to your. listen to what makes you happy at the end of the day if you're unhappy as an artist it's going to come through so just do what makes you happy just do what makes you feel happy going to bed and when you shut your eyes you need to feel like oh i'm i'm happy with the way my my music or my art is going just make sure that you're happy with your art oh man the most amazing memory of doing angels of rock is uh, just riding that bike and creating songs and being surrounded by women uh, and talking about women empowerment seeing women come from such small lesser privileged places and circumstances and yet making such amazing things out of their life there was so much i learned um riding the bike obviously for 25 days uh, and through like all the way from maharashtra to punjab it was um, the most amazing experience and to collaborate with other artists and to like you know write songs and have them sing on my songs and have me sing on their songs it was just it, it was it was the most um, uh, eye opening exhilarating experience of my life yeah i don't like to talk about the work i do it's uh, it's personal and it's uh, I, you know it's it's almost like i I don't want to come from a place where you know you want to brag like oh I do this I do that because honestly I don't do much. Uh, I just love animals. It's not just stray animals. I just love all animals. I I just I've always loved animals. And um, the only thing that I do is I I sponsor this very beautiful um camel who's uh, rescued and is um, has found home in this beautiful place called the backwater sanctuary in kabini and a very dear friend of mine zoha runs the place and she's got a whole set of like equine um rehabilitation that she does horses donkeys and this camel so i 
I sponsor this camel, but that's all I do. But I am, I am crazy about animals. Yeah. Um, keep the music alive. Uh, artists need you. Artists need uh, listeners, and uh, we need you to appreciate original music that we artists make with a lot of love and effort. So um, just support the artists you like. If you like a song, you know, take that extra 30 seconds to go Google who's made the song, who's written the song, who sung the song. Because a lot of times it happens that, you know, when they find out you sung the song or it's your song, they're like, oh, I love the song, but I never knew it was yours, you know. So if, if you really like a song, just try and make that small little extra effort to show them support because they need it. Thank you.